Hello again from Alasian Productions. Some of you may remember the video I made a little while ago about the custom tailstock lever I made for my TAG micro lathe. Well, today I wanted to show you the process from start to finish of building one of these. Again, I'll have the schematic up at the end of the video, so if you want to make one for yourself, you can. Or alternately, if you want one but don't want to make it yourself, quick search on eBay should pull up the listings I have for these. So, let's begin. First I'm going to cut off uh, a blank for the short flat section where the holes go for mounting in a tailstock. This is uh, 3 quarter inch wide by 8 inch thick 304 stainless steel. I've got my chop saw set up for putting it a little bit over 1.8 inches. It will give us some room to make up a trim later on for squaring it up. Now the next step we'll take with these blank flats you can see they've got a little bit of a burr on them and the chop saw doesn't chop enough quite square. So what I'll do is I'll take on my belt sander here and I'll clean them up. Now I've got a blank piece that's ready for the drilling step. And I'll set this aside and we're going to cut out a blank for the, uh, the rod now. I've changed the depth stop on my saw now and we're going to cut a piece of 3 8 inch rod to a length of 7 inches. You'll notice since my depth stop doesn't have enough length to extend for that, I've extended a little bit further by drilling and tapping and placing a large flat washer all the way at the tip. So instead of using this for a depth stop, we're using this washer which sticks out just, a, just under an inch farther. You see how that hits right there. And then once I have that in place, I'll take that washer and I'll loosen it so it, as the cut's made, it doesn't want to grab back into the saw blade. That'll give me room. You'll see I'll pull it off this way. And here we go. And the same way as with the flat stock, I'm going to take my belt sander here and I'm going to square up the ends a little bit and trim the burrs off of them. Now with the rod cut for the handle, we have two variations on the way these will be made. The ones with the black knobs on them are fine just as they are and they can be threaded because those knobs I've been able to acquire have a 3 8 inch 16 thread and I can make that thread without any adjustment. However I have red variants of these two. That is they have uh, a dark red plastic handle and the only size that I was able to find those in is a 5 16 18 thread. So in order to thread those properly onto a 3 8 inch shaft, I have to put them onto the lathe and turn down a little bit of a step there so I can thread them. And you can see this is what I'm going to do right now. And there we have it at just a tad under 5 sixteenths of an inch, where I want it for threading. 
Now I'm going to take the blanks which I just made up with a flat stock and drill some holes in it. Uh, I've got my mill set up here. Uh, as you can see I made up a depth stop so I can just stick the blanks in there and it will hold in the vise exactly the same spot every time. And I've got my mill all situated and locked in place to where I'll just continually go through and I'll drill one hole through all of them and then I'll go back and I'll move the mill over to the second position and I'll drill the second hole. So here goes. <laughs> Now this next step is to assemble the two pieces by welding them together. You can see I got this nice little vise here and I've got a uh, eighth inch piece that was a cut off scrap for the flat stock which I use for a shim now for shimming it up. Now because the rods are three eighths of an inch and the plates are one eighth of an inch having just one one eighth inch plate below this will center the plate on the rod. And it goes into place like that. Make sure everything's nice and flush. And tighten the vise. Now it's all set for welding up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to place two tack welds on one side, then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put a full weld on the other side and I'm going to fold it back again put a full weld on the first side And there you have it. Now with the tab welded on, I'm going to thread the ends of the shaft so I can put the ball knob on. Now initially, the way I was doing these, I was threading the shaft beforehand, before I would weld the tab on. But I found it difficult to hold a good grip on the shaft to, to thread it. So I found that uh, actually welding the tab on first, it gives me a point to where it will keep the shaft from rotating while I'm trying to thread it. Now I'll start out on the lathe here just to get alignment. I'll take my tail stock and I'll use that to keep pressure on the die to keep it threading in there and it'll help me keep it straight too as I go. So I'll keep a little bit of pressure on the tail stock and I'll start out just a couple of threads just to get started on here straight. And that should be enough. Now I'll move it over to the vise where it's easier to turn the, ta the, the die, I mean. Now the last step that remains in completing these levers is to put a little bit of a shine on them and take the heat marks and clean them up a bit with the buffer here. I have a three-quarter dual speed ball door buffer which works very well for this although it is a little bit time consuming uh, usually about 15 or 20 minutes to do one of these but I'll show you a couple minutes sped up of the process just to begin with. 
I have a six inch wheel on here which is well in need of changing at the moment but we'll see if we can get a few more done on this with what remains and I am using a uh, Deco, Dico brand uh, stainless steel uh, bar polish on this. And there you have it. That completes our lever from start to finish. All I do now is just screw the ball knob on the end and it's all set to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.